Super fast shameless self promotion. My merchandise is only available for three more days and I think it's really nice and if you want some, get some. Shameless self promotion over. Yesterday, yesterday was an interesting chain of events. So I recorded a video throughout the entire day on all these things that were introduced in the previous Minecraft snapshot. And I was really, really happy with them. I was interested in all of the game mechanics. I had a lot of fun playing around with these game mechanics. But then as I was uploading that video, which, you know, I was, I was a week behind everyone else making their snapshot videos, but still, as I was uploading that video, Mojang then dropped a new snapshot. And I just knew in my head, I didn't have to look at the features, I knew that it was going to involve Skulk Census. So that immediately made my snapshot video all about testing out new redstone features in the snapshots seem a little bit dated. So here we are again. And I cannot tell you how excited I am to play around with this thing because, well, I, I've played around with modified versions of it, but it sounds like it actually behaves a little bit differently. You see, the Skulk Sensor is designed to detect movement. So for example, a dropper clicking, that doesn't activate it. A note block playing notes doesn't actually activate it. The only things that activate a skulk sensor are things that move. So for example, a piston going back and forth, that is going to activate the skulk sensor because we have movement. Now another thing that happened with the modified versions of the skulk sensor is because it was based on sounds, if you went outside of the sound range, of the block that was making the sound, where you can't actually hear it anymore, the skulk sensor just wouldn't detect it, because the sound would stop playing from the thing that is making the sound, whereas that does not seem to be the case in the real version of the skulk sensors. Which is good, because although that was a decently useful game mechanic for detecting players from incredibly long distances, it's also incredibly broken. Like, that's a very, very broken game mechanic, so I'm glad to see that that isn't actually in the real version. But it only gets better from there. You see, Mojang did something incredibly interesting. They introduced what's known as skulk frequencies, which means our skulk sensor will give a different signal strength depending on what is moving. So, for example, if I just land here and start walking around, then that will give off a signal strength of 1. If I jump, then that will give a signal strength of 5. If I open up this fence gate or close this fence gate, then that will give a much stronger signal strength. If I flick this lever, that will give another signal strength. If I activate this piston, that will give a different signal strength, and that means that we can detect and isolate specific noises. Now, what on earth do I mean by isolate? Well, if we connect up our skulk sensors to some of these circuits, then they will only give outputs when a specific redstone signal strength is inputted. So this one will only give a redstone output when the signal strength is 10, whereas this one will only give an output when the signal strength is 1. So that means that skulk sensor on the right is specifically listening for footsteps. So anything walking around, this skulk sensor is going to be detecting it because it's giving out a signal strength of one and that circuit is specifically designed to only give an output on a signal strength of one. Whereas this skulk sensor on the left is only going to give an output when a player opens up a container. So whenever they open a chest, it's only going to give an output then. If anything else is happening, it's not going to give a redstone output. It doesn't care about that. So now that we have a lot of the game mechanics all sussed out, I think it's time that we actually start building with this thing. And we start where all redstone things start, piston doors. And I'm hoping that this concept should all function. So we've got the skulk sensors, we've got observers that run out into redstone dust that is going to be powering our pistons. Then we have a line of wool that should stop the sound of the pistons going back into the skulk sensors. So they should only be able to hear our footsteps. So we now have a wirelessly activating skulk sensor powered piston door so we can run at this thing from any angle and it will open before we actually get there which already that's incredibly cool and it looks even cooler now that i've actually placed in all of the blocks so this is a proper looking redstone contraption now i'm just curious to see what happens if we actually start removing wool so the sound can travel from the pistons back into the skulk sensors okay yep yeah, things begin to break <laughs> yeah things definitely begin to break so wool now has a fairly interesting property in that it blocks vibrations from traveling from the thing that is causing the vibration to the skulk sensor so that means that we don't get these infinite redstone clocks created because the skulk sensor isn't able to hear the pistons moving back and forth right let's design some traps then and we're going to start things off with a really really simple one so the idea is is underneath here i'm going to have my skulk sensor that is going to go in this one singular gap in this gigantic wool occluded area now the point of this is i don't want the skulk sensor detecting players walking up okay i, I don't want curiosity to be punished but I do want the opening of this chest to be punished. As soon as they open this chest, 
that's where problems are going to arise. And you know what? I think I'm really going to make use of all of the new features that have been introduced in the recent snapshots. And we're going to go full Indiana Jones here. Right, everything should now all be in place. So this is looking pretty deadly. If I walk around here, as I say, absolutely nothing is going to happen. But as soon as I open up this chest... <laughs> <laughs> we get spiked from above. Okay, so that's a little bit of fun. Let's go a tiny bit eviler. And I'm kind of building this in reverse order. So we're starting things off with this rather 2012 looking redstone circuit, but it does work nicely. And of course, we're going to be activating that, making use of skulk sensors. And the thing that is going to be activating the skulk sensors is this diamond pile up here. So the concept is, if anyone wants to come in and steal those diamonds, they're probably going to have to stand in this 2x2 area. And as soon as they break any of the blocks, the skulk sensor is going to detect it and drop them to their death. And the range on these things is pretty impressive. I mean, if I break that bottom diamond block there, it actually sends a vibration through to the skulk sensors. That's ridiculous. So all the redstone should now be done and working. And one thing that I want to point out is the tactical use of this wall block here, which does actually stop the sound of the piston from going into those skulk sensors. It doesn't look like it would, but it does. So now we find out how lethal this thing actually is. Right, I've got my netherite pickaxe, breaking my diamond block, and that... That was quick. <laughs> that was... <laughs> oh, that would be that would be a difficult way to go. And of course, it's not just based on me breaking the blocks. If I even open up this shulker box, it's it's the end of the day for me. So I think it's safe to say that the skull sensor is going to be absolutely incredible for trap designs. I'm going to be working on a bunch of them for a full dedicated video that will come out at some point. It's going to be evil. Like, really evil. Next up, we have this idea of wireless redstone signal transfer. So I'm thinking if I just place each one of these little modules seven blocks apart, because the only thing that I need to watch out for is the sound of the trapdoor traveling back to this skulk sensor, and we'll end up with a massive feedback loop. If I place each one of these modules seven blocks apart, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then skulk sensor and then trapdoor, that should mean that all of these will be completely separate from one another and I should be able to send a redstone signal all the way down the line, which looks amazing. That looks absolutely incredible. I mean, is that not the most satisfying thing in the world? Now, literally in the world. I never thought I'd see the day where we could do this sort of thing. Now, what I'm curious about is if we can actually make a two-way system, which it totally looks like we can, without having these things interfere with one another, and this... I mean, that looks like it's working. So if we actually get rid of the wool here, obviously that's where you're going to start running into issues because if we, for example, place a block here, yeah, we get we get redstone signals going all over the place and we get things hooking up, but this wool means that those two lines are actually kind of insulated from one another. So I can send a redstone signal going this way that will activate that redstone lamp, but I can also send a redstone signal going this way, which will activate that redstone lamp. Well, that's really cool. Like, really cool. Like, really, really cool. The ability to have a two-way wireless redstone signal sending system. I mean, I just love the idea of being able to send signals to each other's bases through the air. You could even decorate them as if they're little telephone poles or something. You, I mean, you, you would do a much better job than what I've done here. This is... <laughs> uh, you could probably tell how long this took me. In case you can't tell, not long. Really not long. The next thing that I'm curious about testing out is proximity detectors. So what we have here is a skulk sensor which is listening out for this ocelot. And that skulk sensor is connected into an absolutely gigantic pulse extender. This looks like a fancy redstone circuit, but it's not. It's just one really, really big pulse extender that runs into this redstone lamp. Now the reason that we need this gigantic pulse extender is because occasionally this guy gets super lazy and just doesn't move very often. Which means there's long periods of time between the skulk sensor detecting movement. And if we didn't have the gigantic pulse extender, that means that this redstone lamp would be switching on and off quite a bit. And we don't want that to happen. We want this redstone lamp to be solidly on when a player is within proximity of this redstone contraption. And when a player is outside of proximity, we want the redstone lamp to be solidly off. Now, the way that we're detecting proximity, if you hadn't quite realized, is mobs stop moving outside of a certain radius of the player, I believe. <laughs> I hope. So while I'm near this thing, this guy's moving around a lot, but when I get further away, he should stop moving and the redstone contraption should all switch off. So let's see what happens. I mean, I can still see the pig. Okay, he still looks like he's moving, but he has just disappeared. He hasn't despawned, he's just not visible. I'm outside of the loaded range, I assume? I think that redstone lamp's gonna switch off immediately. I mean, all the pulse extenders are pretty much switched off. There we go, the redstone lamp switched off. And then if I get closer to this thing, we can now see the pig. 
and he should move in a second, and our redstone lamp should switch on. And that means that the design has detected that I am within proximity. Yeah, there we go. Everything is kicking back into action. And then if we go far away again, yeah, I mean, look, the redstone lamp's just switched off. And I'm, I'm going to stand here, and I'm going to wait for, like, 20 minutes. I'm going to look at this thing. Because I want to make sure that that redstone lamp can't possibly switch back on while we're this far away. Because if it if it can't, then that is incredibly interesting. That's like really, really interesting. Because that means that we can detect players within like a 100 block radius. Yep, the redstone lamp never switched back on. Now don't get me wrong, passive mob-based proximity detectors have been done in the past. But they've always been a little bit tricky to build with pressure plates and pistons and things pushing the mob back into position. Whereas this, this is a much, much simpler setup. Very, very, very cool. Hang on a minute. If skull sensors detect vibrations instead of sounds then I'm curious to see what happens here. Even though a tree growing technically doesn't make a noise, I wonder if it gets picked up. It doesn't. And I'm assuming the same thing goes for stuff like sugarcane growing. If we just wait a couple seconds, maybe increase the random tick speed a little bit further. Nope. No detection. The only thing that gets detected is, of course, me breaking the sugarcane. So I guess that confirms that this won't be particularly useful in farming. One thing that 2012 me would be incredibly happy with, though, is how this can be used for magic buttons. I used to absolutely love these things. You know, a button that is floating above the ground looks like it shouldn't be able to power anything, but it does. Now, in the past, we've always had to kind of cheat this a little bit and have it on top of slabs. It still looks cool, okay? But having it fully above the ground looks considerably cooler. And if I just hook up all of this redstone so the whole thing's properly wired up, this whole system should now be fully functional. So if I hit this button, then that is going to send a signal through down into the skulk sensor, which is going to detect the sound of the button being pressed, and it's going to open up our piston door. Now, if I walk on this thing, you can see that our skulk sensor is hearing the noise of me walking, but it's not doing anything about it because it's not the correct signal strength, it's not the right skulk frequency. The only thing that is going to get this door to open is the skulk frequency of a redstone switch being activated. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. I mean, I gotta say, I did not see the skulk frequency coming. You know, that wasn't really talked about too much at the event. In fact, I don't think it was mentioned at all. And it wasn't in any of the modifications, the modified versions of the skulk sensor that I used. And it is such a powerful change because it means that you can actually differentiate and decide which frequencies you want your skulk sensor to actually tune into, which makes it incredibly powerful. It means it's not just like a blunt hammer where it just detects everything and you're just trying your best to surround it in wool as much as possible. No, you can go, don't listen to my footsteps, don't listen to this piston, don't listen to that, only listen out for this button, and then I I'm good with you. I'm impressed. As far as first impressions go, this is a strong first impression. I, I don't think I've been this excited about a redstone component in a very, very long time. This is super, super cool. And it's definitely going to revolutionize the way that I approach redstone circuitry. And those are some big words. So I'm going to be playing around with these a lot over the next couple of weeks. Expect thousands and thousands of Skulk Sensor videos. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. And I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Oh, and is he going to do it again? Is he going to do more shameless self-promotion? I think he is. Absolutely ridiculous, I know. But this merchandise is not available for much longer, okay? And I would hate for anyone to miss out on Chuffed to Bits t-shirts and Chuffed to Bits hoodies and 12 bamboo hoodies and t-shirts and everything like that. You know, just, just get it while it's available and have fun with it. Enjoy.